Hi, everybody. Tony Marcolini. Welcome to the podcast. It may interest you to know. I'm joined with my co-host, Seamus McDonough, and a very special guest that we have here today with us, uh, actress, producer, and as I was just telling her, trailblazer in the web series format, Crystal Chappelle. Welcome, Crystal. Hey, Tony. Hey, Seamus. Lovely to be hey, here. Hi. Thank you. I'm First, we have to give a shout out, I think, to Alicia Minshew, who's a mutual yeah. friend of us and helped connect us. So thank you, Alicia. Thanks, Lish. We love, <laughs> we love you. Okay, so one of the reasons I really, I pursued you to get you on the podcast. And I mean, I want to talk about so many things. You've been involved. Uh, you've been an actress, you know, for a lot of years. You've been su successfully involved in several different shows. Uh I think, and I'm, I'm starting out of order rather than taking you back to the beginning, which is unusual for me. Uh, I wanted to jump right in to that, that period in between. You would come to a point in time where you were uh, as part of a, I guess you call them a super couple, right? On Guiding Light, you would become a super couple uh, uh, with another actress, Jessica Lecce. I think I'm pronouncing it. Yeah. 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 Okay. I'm Italian. That's so wrong. <laughs> but I got that wrong. That is so wrong. Um, and you would become part of uh, the, the nickname, I guess, Italia. Yeah. And they kind of yeah. names together. And you were a bit of a super couple at the time on Guiding Light. And there was some controversy. Uh, I mean, initially, it looked like they were putting you together. Uh, and then as time went on, I guess there was some controversy with WCBS where the show aired in terms of allowing you two to kiss on the show. And I fans got frustrated at the time. And you, uh, I mean, you thought you were very receptive to your fans and to, you know, the, the, the loads of mail that I'm sure you were getting from women and young girls all over the world uh, who were thrilled that you were getting into that storyline. Uh, and you you literally created a web series called Venice, the, the series, uh, as a kind of in response and as a love letter, I guess, to fans uh, mm -hmm. and to all the young women who had been uh, following you and admiring you over it. And that was at a time when there weren't a lot of web series, you know, when you started out uh, and certainly not women at the helm of producing them. Uh, and I really admired that so much. I felt like you were a trailblazer uh, for women in, in this regard. And I, I wanted you here to talk about that and the decision to take that step. So how did you make the decision? Um, it was such an unusual story for me after 20 years on daytime to you know, get the opportunity to play a love story with another woman. And and there was so much pushback and, uh, you know, I have no judgment about corporate um, people at the time, but there were people who were just very afraid of, of uh, like physical threats, um, uh, people in the building coming in. And I mean, it's just very uh, simple day to day things. Um, we were on our way to cancellation um, and our executive producer, Ellen Wheeler and Jill Laurie Hurst, one of the writers, really kind of shaped this story in such a way that um, I think it was sort of um, being greenlit on the network level. And so they, but they told a very simple uh, love story and it, it was, it was so touching to me. I, and yes, I got email. That was the time when emails were really the thing and from, from women and families all over the world. And um People who had never seen soaps before were finding clips on YouTube uh, mm -hmm. and, and being introduced to this show through through YouTube. Um, we were canceled. There was the frustration of uh, these two women never being allowed to kiss, even on the cheek, the hand. There was just no uh, lip to skin service there, um, but we could hug. Um, and it just was very uh, frustrating. And I, I didn't quite know what I wanted to do after Guiding Light, but um, I'd always been fascinated with the web and computers and all that fun techie stuff. And, and uh, I asked Jessica Lucia if she'd be willing to go do something like that online, just so that we could have that freedom to kiss um, and express ourselves that way uh, for all of these fans who have been supporting and writing, or not writing, um, 
writing online, you know, they were kind of rooting for us to be able to just kiss or to be able to see something like that. And um, yeah, I mean, that's really, that was the impetus. It was their energy that kind of fed into this idea of let's create something separate that we, uh, you know, without infringing upon the rights of, of Procter and Gamble and be able to continue the story. And everyone was on board, including the fans. So it was, it was like this wonderful wave of positive um, forward energy. Now, do you, do you remember in the early days of Guiding Light, did they come to you about this storyline before it started? They did. Yeah. Ellen, Ellen uh, Jill sat down with each of us individually and said, here's the story we want to tell. Are you comfortable with it? So, and of course, Jessica and I were perfectly fine. So that was just sort of their, yeah, that's, that was the way forward. Well, I mean, I was a soap fan, really, my whole life. Uh, started years ago with all my children. I was a little girl. But, I mean, I always watched the soaps. And for certain, you had great chemistry uh, long before, you know, they thought of putting you together. Even as just combative uh, competitors, you had very good chemistry as actresses together. It was fun. Yeah. <laughs> Those are the, the fun stories to play. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so I, I think... Uh, that that helped certainly, you know, moving through it's it almost seemed like a natural progression the, the way you interacted with one another. It kind of just seemed to organically evolve. Uh, but I think making the decision was really a brave one to step into step into the web. I mean, certainly now it's pretty commonplace, and there are very you know powerful shows that exist only on the web. Uh, but back then, you were taking a risk. Uh, and so that's why I kind of hold you out as somewhat of a trailblazer in this regard, it's, especially as a woman. Did you get a lot of uh, feedback, negative or positive, when you first made the decision? Um, initially, when we told folks we were doing it, fans, they were totally on board. They were like, where do we sign up? How do we help? How do we help support this? Um, I, I would say the first season, second season, even it was you know, same energy and it still is to this day, but it's, it's um, back then uh, we were sort of flying below the radar, which I didn't mind at the time. There was some tensions or frictions, not necessarily with the, the show owners, but with some fans uh, who just could see me this way, but not see me that way in this part, but not that, you know, not that part. So that, that was the only pushback I got in terms of the business. Um, people didn't really think it was going anywhere. So they, they didn't really look at me and mm. I didn't mind it at the time. Mm. It was a good way to stay out of, um, out of the crosshairs of, of some reactions. Um, it, it was the, the relationship was between me and the fans, the show and the fans. And um, I just sort of pushed everyone else out and, you know, and now it's a little different. People are, People have evolved. There are more women um, show running. There are more characters that are diverse. And, um, and those people I'm starting to connect with. Um, it's just, it's been a very interesting journey over the last 10, 12 years with, with Venice. Um, but yeah. Right. Seamus, are you trying to say something? <laughs> <I will. laughs> uh, yeah, kind of, yes. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, so... And also the cost, cost-wise. I mean, uh, it must be so much less expensive to, to make a show on the, for the web, is it? It is. It is. But I, it's still expensive. I'm still paying. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm still, you know, aligned with unions and there are rules and things like that. And, and the people that I hire are now, they're like a part of my family, my crew, mm -hmm. my cast. So they, they offer me... Um, the gift of their time at moments or maybe a little lesser rate. Um, mm. But it's still, you know, you have to find those people who will work a 10 hour day and um, much, much cheaper than television for sure. And I, I, I'm really, I rely on that crew. I rely on the directors that we bring in. They know about equipment. They know all the new stuff. You know, they're usually people who are like a gaffer who wants to be a DP and so they get that opportunity and they get opportunity after opportunity to hone their skills and they get better and better. And then they make me look better. <laughs> it's fantastic. It's fun to see all these mm -hmm. people. I've had people come mm -hmm. on, only, you know, wanted to learn how to use cameras. 
Mm. And, and really have had no experience. And then they ended up getting work as camera assists. So it's been fun to watch these people like kind of grow, mm. you know, in their own field. And then eventually- yeah, I got jealous because <laughs> I've I've just done some acting myself, and it's like a it becomes a family as you as you know, and uh, I just love it and the and the interaction, just the acting, and just um, oh, I want to do it again, real quick. <laughs> well, you should. It's it's a great. It is. It's the best feeling to get on set with people mm. that. Uh, it's play. It's really just a big giant <laughs> sandbox, you know. <laughs> it's. Great. <laughs> well, and you didn't fly under the radar that long because your your award the show is award winning, um, and eventually you started you know uh, getting a lot of attention for it. Yeah. congratulations for that. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, you're still going. I mean, what are you on season seven now? Is that? Yeah, we'll yeah. shoot that at the end of this year or early next. Yeah. Uh, it's 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 quite a tribute. I mean, but that it's <laughs> mind blowing to me. I can't even believe you know, we're still here and people are, they show up for me and the show and, and it's fantastic. It's a great community. For sure. Um, so let's talk a little bit about your earlier projects. Um, do you remember you the first acting job you ever had? Oh boy. You mean like in front of cam the camera, that kind yeah. of thing? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Not like, well, I mean, no, it could have been like if you were on Broadway or something like that. No, I never made it. Uh, never made it on Broadway. Um, I'm a little. I'm. I've got stage a bit, a bit of stage fright. So live perform. I'm an. I'm a huge fan of the theater, and I love going to the theater. But I. I rather watch somebody else up on that stage. Um, Me too. My, my, hu <laughs> my husband is a phenomenal stage actor. I mean, it's it's mind blowing. You know, uh, he's a good camera actor, but he's like great on stage anyway no uh, my first uh job that i can remember i did something for um this was in my hometown of baltimore uh it was for the world wrestling federation i played um they did a, a what do you call it a spoof on the dating game right it was called the mating game <laughs> and i was the you know girl came on and asked these wrestlers a bunch of questions that's my and that that got me into astra yeah, so I mean, so your first is that where is that where you kind of got fell in love with acting? Did you always want to be an actress? Um, yes, I did theater in school in high school, um, and I did some in college. Um, uh, but I really wanted to work on television, and uh, yeah, I mean that's so that's what I I kind of went for, and specifically soaps. I wanted to do soaps. So you realized the dream with your career then. Not many people can say that. <laughs> oh, well, I, I hope, well, I, I'm lucky that I'm very fortunate because yes, I, I got to do exactly what I wanted to do. And I can remember that the early years on Days of Our Lives, right? You, uh, you, you kind of burst into what was, a, I guess, a super couple on that show and caused a bit of trouble. Well, yeah, just my presence caused trouble. It was, <laughs> what do you mean she's going to be with him? Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, that was, uh, you know, the funny thing is, is that I didn't know, I didn't know that show. I didn't know Guiding Light. I knew the people, the actors from the events and stuff like that, but I, I was an All My Children fan. Uh, I watched um, uh, All My Children, One Life to Live and General Hospital. You were on One Life to Live for a while too, right? I was. Max's girlfriend or something. I was. I was the juggling nun. I was <laughs> not a very, not a very, not very good at either. But um, you know, it, it was a fun experience. Yeah, I mean, super. You fall into super couples. That's usually why they bring you on so that you can either break them up or whatever, be the new love interest. Your pattern. I, and I hate to say this because I, I don't mean to box you in at all, but your pattern, pattern is kind of to play these uh, characters that are troublesome, uh, you know, not not mentally, but I mean, that you, that you kind of mix, you know, you mix it up a lot when you come on a show. I like to. <laughs> I find it's a more useful, first of all, it's more fun, but it's more, more fun. useful. Um, because, it, you know, with Days, the first time they were bringing me on to be a super couple with with Peter Reckle. So that was, that's just what, what that was. And they brought me back. They were trying to keep Bo and Hope apart. Um, 
same with Max and Maggie and uh, Olivia was just there to mess up everybody. And I, that was probably my favorite. It, I was so cathartic because I got to say all the stuff I would never say <laughs> in real life. You know, they wrote it down for me and I went, yes. You know. <laughs> yeah, you definitely, you know, you, you, Olivia, that to me, with all the characters you played, she stood out the most. Uh, you were the most badass, I guess, with Olivia. Um, I found that y you kind of got into it with everybody. Let's face it. I mean, you, you're, that character was just uh, always ready to go. She never avoided a good fight. Uh, and she was kind of sneaky. And you just played it well. Is that part of your personality? Is it, are you like <laughs> um, I'm actually more shy. Uh, and... Um, I'm, I'm very much a, a listener, uh, more than a talker. Wow. Um, yeah. I, I like to observe. I think it's, people are interesting and, and, um, so would your uh, husband, would your husband describe you as high maintenance? No, no. Are you kidding? Life is good because I, I'm a type A, you know, gotta keep things orderly person. <laughs> that's you know but I'm not uh, it, I'm not I don't need to be aggressive I found some kind of zen in my life but I liked Olivia because um she taught me to become more um assertive I True. think if anything I learned more from her I, I learned to kind of get out of my shell more because I didn't feel comfortable uh I remember Paul Roush who brought me on to Guiding Light they had they had uh my character sleeping uh, married to this one guy, Josh, Robert Newman, right? And then they had, I was sleeping with Alan, Ron Raines. Both men are amazing. Um, in order to further my husband's career. And I was doing this love scene. And I'm like, Paul, they're going to hate me, man. They're like, I'm married. He, he looked at me and said, I think it makes you more interesting. And I went, oh, okay. And so ever since then, I was just like, however you can make yourself more useful and interesting in whatever story you're in, <laughs> do it. And it's very freeing. Um, and then they started writing for me, like I said. They would write these lines that were like, and what used to scare me about saying those things, I was like, <sniffs> because eventually I knew I was gonna get my comeuppance. I mean, you know, that's just the way it works. What but was it like playing those scenes? When, when you got to the point where it boomeranged and uh -huh. to you, what was it like to play it then? Well, then you can kind of either get really defiant and say whatever, you know, I mean, it just depend on, depends on how they played it, or you could, you could sort of have it be a mea culpa moment for the character. And maybe there's this much growth, maybe there's one step forward, but there's going to be two steps back, right? You know, it's, uh, it's fun. It's fine. It's, it's soapy melodrama, which I grew up with and I loved. Now, during this guiding light, at some point, I think, did you not, uh, you had young children at the time. Yeah. Right? Yeah. When you were filming that, what was it like being a, a mom juggling motherhood in this, this career that, you know, had you in the spotlight and, and working all the time? Um, you know, it, it was never a five day a week job. So it wasn't, it wasn't horrible that I might work three days or four days. So I had a lot of time off with my kids. Um, and we just, we kind of stayed out of the spotlight and did our family stuff. And um, yeah, my, my husband was working from home. I mean, it was a lot of good, good time. But, you know, I will say this. I, I remember um, my son, my oldest son in particular, seeing me in a love scene. And we never let him watch the stuff. They were little. Yeah. And, and that was a little... Uh, I don't know. I think it kind of marked him for <laughs> life. Sure and then when hard I, to see yeah, that, right? Right? Like, why are you kissing that guy? Um, and then uh, I, when I went back to Days in 2011, no, nine, um, the first thing I had to do was stab my husband on camera. My character was killing his character off. And my eldest son, Jacob, saw that. And it, I mean, it devastated him. Like, it, and for years later, he was going, what, why, how, you know, real, just the image of his father getting oh. stabbed by his father. <laughs> like, oh, I'm so sorry. Anyway, 
I'm sure it'll come up again at a dinner table. <laughs> well, th thanks for telling me that, though, really. <laughs> I mean, what other kid has that kind of experience? That's, that's rather bizarre. It is mm. bizarre. <laughs> But you have a great love story with your husband, right? Did did you actually meet on set? Yeah, he was my first on-screen kiss on camera ever. Oh, I love yeah. that. On days um, 1990, 1991. Did you know right away? I knew I thought he was cute. <laughs> Me in the second grade, you were really cute. Um, yeah, I mean, I, 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 yes, I was very attracted to him, and but no, I mean, you just kind of take it day to day. And after a while, we were, we both talked, and it was like we were checking the schedule to see if we were both working that day. And yeah. those little things, as yes. as love blooms. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So, what was your most memorable scene to film ever? I love this question because I, we've had a lot of different people on the podcast and we've gotten so many unexpected answers. Uh, so in, in your entire career, what scene is your most memorable? It's so funny because I, I, people will show me scenes and clips of me on a show and I have no recollection of ever doing those scenes or that story. And, um, uh, you know, there was a, I don't know that I have like a specific scene. There were so many moments. Um, you know, it was more of a, a story or a, a vibe of a, of a scene. Um, I love the Otalia story, like I said, for the simplicity of it. And it taught me a lot because I, I didn't know if it would work because it was so simple. And But well written. I mean, simplicity, but very well written, especially for so. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. what I mean. It, it's simple, though. I mean, sometimes we, it can get really big and you know, fantastical. And, and this was so simple that at the time I was going, I don't know if people are going to want to watch this. I mean, it was, but it, it, I was totally wrong and it, it was beautiful. Um, I loved uh, the romance of, of days when I first came on. I thought they did um, going to Cancun and Chichen Itza and, and climbing the pyramids. I mean, I have a very clear recollection of that. I thought it was beautiful. Um, you know, I, I, like I said, I don't think there's one scene. I loved playing with, um, I loved playing Olivia and being in the Spalding house. So anything involving, you know, Ron Reigns and Grant Alexander and, and um, Marge Doucet and uh, just, I, I just had so, I was in so many different storylines with so many different wonderful actors and actresses. But it's hard for me to pin it down. And I, I feel like I'm really, really fortunate as a daytime actor to have been in that situation where I got to be in so many stories with so many amazing actors. Um, and you didn't have like a favorite episode even like you, you know, where you say, well, I look back and I remember that one episode seeing it and like, that's my favorite of me. I don't, I don't, I don't, I never went back and watched myself. Um, really? Yeah. You mean after you filmed it, you didn't you didn't watch the episode or um, some scenes maybe to see how it how it, they turned out, but um, no, I was, I because I, I I would be I, I think too critical. I'd be trying to you know figure it out and work it out. I, I mean, I got better as I the, the older I got, it became about kids and other stuff. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't have time, but. Um, no, I think I was, I think I was a little too critical of myself, you know, especially early on. Do you find that you're your, your, your biggest critic? Uh, I, yeah, I think, yeah. And it's, it's a, it's, for me, it's a great awareness because, you know, you have to learn not to be too hard on yourself in order not to be hard on other people. Right. Right. Um, so yeah, I think so. I didn't, I didn't have any big background in acting. So it, and you're just sort of thrown into this thing and you're going, I'm saying my lines, right? Um, <laughs> and, uh, and then trying to figure out what the business is about. And then, then the whole idea of media and PR comes in, right? And that's a whole other kind of job, really. Um, so mm -hmm. somewhere in all that, I had a good friend, uh, 
who's an actress on a soap. So you have to kind of choose who you want to be or what you want to be. Do you want to be an actor or do you want to be a celebrity? Mm -hmm. And I thought that was, that really resonated with me because I thought I, you know, that's a good question and you have to sort of protect mm -hmm. yourself if you want to really hone your art as a, as a, an actor. I take you back to that Italian storyline because I thought uh, you really shined, uh, right? Because they gave you some pretty dramatic scenes. Uh, the the and some of them were just cute and lovely uh, scenes. I think the angst, uh, you know, they started with your chemistry, then they had a lot of angsty moments where uh, it looked like it was going to be unrequited, and I thought you played those scenes quite lovely. Uh, mm. And then they slowly moved you to heartbroken, right? There comes a point in time when she exits uh, uh, briefly, and I believe to have a baby in real life. But I mean, she, she the character, leaves your character. Uh, yeah. And you have this absolute meltdown on camera uh, where, you know, I guess you go searching for her and then you're That's crying. The nunnery, right? The convent? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're out there screaming. You just have like an absolute meltdown on camera. Uh, and it really appeared so real that I remember from, I had like empathy for you. And bef before I realized like, wait, it's fake. Like, I mean, they call cut and she went about her day, right? But, but before like that, you know, that hit me, I actually had like a Norm empathy. I mean, you did an amazing job in that scene. Thank you. Yes, I remember. Um, I remember that. Do you remember just, filming that? I mean, where, where I do, do you? What I love about daytime is that it's it, it you 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 put it all out there. It's it's meant to really you know get people their feelings all elevated and you know riled up and um, yeah. And and I remember coming. I just come back from a vacation, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "Go scream at that building." I will. <laughs> um, but it was such a beautiful story, and and I just I I. You know, it, 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 I love those characters. I love them together. I loved what they represented. I loved how they had such different backgrounds. Uh, and yet, you know, that, that common thread was, was a love. Um, it was very diverse. It brought in her religious beliefs um, uh, and Olivia's paganism. Um, it, it was just... Um, but that scene, yes, was was full on. Just go, you're fighting for your life. This is the last shot you got, kind of thing. Yeah. And did you feel like there's like a when you when you when you were in in a character, there's like a safety in doing it, and this and the same the same character you're playing a character. It's not you, but you get to play this character. There's, there's a safe safeness in that, isn't there? I I agree. Yeah. There yeah. is. It's, it's, you know, yeah, there's a safety in it. It's the difference between public speaking, I guess, and, and, and playing a character. It just feels, you know, the boundaries of the skin of that character and you, you know, you, you're working with other people to create it. And, and yeah, you feel very safe just putting it all out there because it's not you. Mm. Yeah. I would never go and scream at a building. I might. I take that back. I'm going to roll that back. Yep. Yeah. Just depends on what's in the building. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, but there are certainly, like I said, things that I would never say that these characters said. And, mm. you know, it's like, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and now you you have a, a few projects going at the same time, right? You were, I know you said you're working on season seven, I guess, of Venice right now. Yes. Um, are you are you filming that already? Are you in pre pre production? We are. Um, I'm working with a woman named Jessica Hill. Uh, she's writing uh, a prequel of Venice. How the how Gina and Annie meet. Oh. Uh, I thought it might be fun to sort of explore what happened before that first episode of season one. So um, she's been writing that, we've been working on that and, and we're, we've started season seven. I've done some long-term for it. Um, and I really wanna get back to romance and sort of the simplicity or complexity that life gives you in, in a new relationship, new marriage, right? Um, but some of the prequel, well, it'll overlap into season seven. 
So there'll be good old fashioned uh, kind of flashbacks and references. So we're, we're sort of working on the prequel to get to season seven. That's very, what like, we're very like Orange is the New Black, right? The early years when, uh, you know, you'd see them in jail already, but then there were always flashbacks to 10 years earlier and see their lives as they led to that moment. That's what we're doing. Yeah, um, so we're hoping to shoot like I think the end of this year, early now, this time next year, probably in LA. So oh, I like that a lot. Mm. And then you have a political drama too that you're working on, and, and the name is escaping me. I'm sorry. Beacon Hill. Yes. Beacon. Okay. Beacon Hill. Let's talk about that. Uh, Beacon Hill, um, uh, Bella Productions. That's Jessica Hill, Jessica and Linda Hill. Um, it's their company and they they wrote the script and they came to me and, and said, do you want to produce this? And like, and it's such a, I thought it was such a good script that it's like, absolutely. Um, but yeah, it's about this, uh, it's, 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 it's a political uh, show. It's about these families, these two families, these two women from these two families, very wealthy, very well-connected politically, um, uh, Alicia's character is a journalist and she's, her career is on the rise, right? Um, and, but she's got a senator grandfather who likes to control everything in her life. She's got an alcoholic mother, played by me, um, who has just been ripped down by the family. There's, she's a bit of, just a shell of, of, of a human being, really. So it's, it's all the natural family dynamics, that, you know, Romeo and Juliet, it, you know, it is that kind of thing, but in this political spectrum. Where, now, are you uh, on the next season for that? I... We've done two seasons, um, and then it's really up to them. I, you know, everything got stalled with COVID. Sure. Mm. It's every, everything got sidelined. Mm. Um, you know, not feeling too creative. Uh, and I think... You know, you can't make a writer write. You, that has to, and you can't make an artist do art. That has to come organically. So I feel like we're just back in it this year. Hopefully, it'll continue. Do you shoot Venice in Venice or in the studio? I've done both. I've shot Venice. Um, you could, we've shot on Venice Beach, but then it's just a matter of permits and. <laughs> Yeah, uh, all that fun stuff and where there's space and where they allow us. And so we shot a lot in Santa Monica. Mm. Um, um, we have we did a couple of seasons in Venice, but I also rent studios just to have sets. I rent houses. Sometimes it provides multiple sets. Mm. Um, that's one of the trick I learned from Guiding Light. Uh, toward the end, they they rented a house in New Jersey. Um, we did a lot of exterior shot, uh, shooting, but they went through that. It was a big house and they made sets. Mm. So it might be like the Spalding dining room. And then over here is the hospital. And then mm. like each room had, it was a different set. Wonderful. Yeah. It was creative. I mm. That's right. I remember reading years ago that you were filming uh, in like some small town, uh, in Northern New Jersey, I believe. Keepak. Keepak, yeah. New Jersey. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Did you get a lot of spectators? You get a lot of fans that just kind of stop by? Yeah. We did it. I mean, they really, it really kind of helped me. I, I think it helped me um, see that it was possible, you know, which might have been where I thought, well, let's go do a web series and we'll, you know, because they were doing it and doing it on a much bigger budget than I have, but much lower than what they, they had years before, right? So um, I thought it was creative and innovative and um, it kept us on the air for a year or so more. So now with, you know, with you, these, these two projects, especially Venice, how much control do you have over character storylines or how involved do you get with writing? With Venice, I have total control. And, and I usually, um, I've written a lot more in the first couple of First, the second and third, fourth season, I would do long term. Um, and really, uh, every season, I, I'll write the long term. I'll, I'll, this is what I want to happen with all these characters in the season. Um, I was writing a lot more scenes, um, seasons two and three, four in there. And then it became more about hiring a writer or writers uh, simply for time purposes. 
Um, but at the end of the day, you know, and I like to hire people that I trust that kind of get what I'm saying and, you know, mm -hmm. make it easier and there might be some tweaks, but for the most part, it's, mm -hmm. it's right there. So the, the whole, I love to be creative, but it's, it's, you know, what I've learned about production and I'm just, I'm a one person producer production company um, is all of the pre-production. It takes me about a year to get everything written and organized mm -hmm. and scheduled, mm -hmm. location secured, uh, insurance. You know, it's it's just, it's it's a business, right? So you have mm -hmm. to have all those little th ducks in, in a row. And, and you know, I got to say, like, save some energy for when you actually get on set to work, mm -hmm. you know? So having good writers is amazing. It must be so fulfilling, though. You're doing all the jobs, all of them. <laughs> it's it, it it makes me feel I'm much more appreciative of people who've done the jobs in the past, for sure. Mm -hmm. And when I hire somebody and they come on and I've hired so many union and non-union people, equally good, um, who make my job, my life so much easier, I go, I'm just like, and I know how hard they're working. So yes, it makes me really, really appreciate what they're doing. Mm. Now, we, talk, we talk a lot on, on the podcast about the creative process uh, because Seamus and I kind of have the same opinion. You know, it's very collaborative. Uh, any project that you see, it's collaborative. So uh, you know, the writers write something and of course you need good writing, uh, but then you need the actors to bring that alive. Uh, because it's, otherwise it's just words on a, on a piece of paper. Uh, and then you need the, you know, the cinematographer to get the right, you know, to get the right angles, capture the right moments in the right way. You need the editor to know which take is the best take to put it in. I mean, from soup to nuts, when you start until when somebody actually sees the project, so many hands have been in the creative process of doing that. So the, in, in, in this step, you know, along the way for you, what does the creative process look like for you? If somebody hands you a script where, uh, pick any one of the characters you've played, you know, they're, they're paper, right? They're on paper, you're reading them. And of course that's great. How, does, how do you breathe life into that person and bring those idiosyncrasies and the things that make them them? Well, it helps to kind of have at least a small window of, of an arc of what your, your character is doing. Even if it's just a few days of scripts, it helps if you're talking about, you know, a soap opera. Um, I, I've always, I, I've, I've learned over years, it's my job to find one interesting thing in each scene. <laughs> 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 um, just for me, not that it, the scene isn't interesting, but something that like really gets me excited. Um, I like, or taking a group of scenes and, and trying to find a different angle on it. You know, just to just to throw a spin on something, um, but you you know, depending on what the scene is, if, with the soap opera, you're usually trying to find some kind of angst or tension or excitement, but you're trying to find some little kernel of of a pop, right? Um, obviously, with a, a film or something like that, that's more nuanced, and you, you're going to build it a little slower. Um, I mean, that's just what I do. I kind of look at it as a map and, and try to find like that little pop in the scene that I hope makes it work. Sure. When, when, I, when you read the character for the first time before you've played it, do you see the person in your head? Do you see, uh, you know... It, like everybody on those Raymond Robert used to touch all the food to his chin, right? That it wasn't really written that way originally, but I it like kind of brought that in, uh, you know, eventually. I, I think one, I think maybe Ray Romano's real brother in real life did something like that and uh, they wound up working it in. But are there little things that you see for that character, that paper character uh, that when you're reading that you, that you feel or you bring in? Uh, yeah, I, th I think you do. I think it's how you deliver um, lines, how your cadence, you know, it, it's, ev it's every little thing that you, you bring in. It's sort of, you know, yeah, I had a friend who had to be in a coma for on, on camera for months. And I'm like, aren't you like, <laughs> I mean, I, are you, because I am going to win an Emmy for the most outstanding coma patient. <laughs> 
in a okay. series and she would she was like I'm a really good coma um you know i i think you just it's, it's every little thing that you bring into it and in especially with characters that are on camera a lot a series regular you, i think you're constantly trying to they want you to sort of say the same because it's reliable but i think as an actor you're always looking to find something a little different that you can bring into a scene um and yes, they will incorporate things along the way. They, I think they will watch a scene and with Guiding Light, especially toward the end, like the last year or so, they didn't mind an ad lib or two and that used to be a no-no. Um, so I was making my character a little more sarcastic um, and then they started writing it that way, um, which was fun. So yeah, mm -hmm. but that's, you know, I have no say over that. They might let me get away with the ad lib and then they start writing it, so. Sure, and that's all ways of carving, creatively carving out uh, the character. Probably one of the things that helped make your character there so particularly interesting. I hope so. And just all the wacky crap that she would do. She was, she, they'd have me doing, trying to kill somebody and then the next three days I'm walking around town shopping. <laughs> 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 I'm like, okay, just had a bad moment there. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, I yeah. love soaps for that. Though. It's just fun. Yeah, they are. They're great fun, and they and and you know what? And they have a loyal fan base for sure. Yeah. Um. And and the actors, they they've all been loyal to you. I noticed in many of your projects, you know, actors that you've worked with before. Uh, mm -hmm you know, have followed with you. So you definitely inspire loyalty around the people uh, who you surround yourself with. Well, I, that's, yes. I mean, I'm very fortunate. I, but I feel like I, there might, you know, we're all cousins and, you know, we, you know, we've been around each other for 25 years, 30 years. That's a long time, right? Uh, even if we're not on a, the same show, it's a very small community and, you know, you just know people from events and, and you hang out with people that aren't on your show. And um, yeah, I mean, I think that they were, I was really, really happy that they were, I wasn't surprised that they were supportive, that they were willing to go out and, and do something completely different on the web and um, for not a lot of money. Uh, it was really sort of an art project. And uh, yeah, I was, it's really cool. Mm. Well, can I say you've, you've inspired me because I've been wanting to do something for a while and I, I never thought about doing it on the web. And it's, thank you. Thank you. Oh, you should. Yes, thank you. And and I, I can't wait for someone to write me the line. This could be my, the line I want to get written for me is, when I, I, I appear on scene and I say, if you give me one more ultimatum. <laughs> okay. That's a good line. <laughs> give me one more ultimatum. <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah oh Seamus at least, he's, at least he's not telling you jokes <laughs> <laughs> he has a, he's got a series of horrible jokes <laughs> that he insists on telling people and you should not <laughs> encourage him Crystal you should not oh. <laughs> because once they begin it's just down the rabbit hole you go <laughs> <laughs> um so I also want to talk about, you've done a movie, I think with Jessica as well, where you focused on, I want to say Alzheimer's? Yes. Yes. What was that like? Did you do a lot of research going into that role? I did. Um, that, it, it was an amazing experience. Um, Mar Marissa Callen is, is the name of the writer and the pro executive producer approached me and us about starring in this movie and producing it. And, um, and she had written a script. Um, uh, she has a close, close connection with Alzheimer's. And uh, we were like, okay. Um, and th that's an interesting thing about a film because it's, it's beginning, middle and an end. And even though some of the scenes change and things get edited out, and, uh, you know, it's right there, right? The story. Um, so I spent about a year uh, while things were being tweaked and we were in pre-production, um, working with the uh, Southern California uh, Alzheimer's chapter. 
they let me uh, come down. They got on the phone with me quite a bit and other the other producers and um, had conversations with us, um, told us stories. They let me come down and visit a couple of times and go on field trips uh, with some groups of people, patients. Um, so it was very, very, very informative. So by the time we got to the set, it was, um, we had a good idea of what we wanted to do. Sure, I imagine that was a difficult role to play. It, it was, and I, you know, I, I think for me, it, it was just wanting to do it justice after, you know, having met the people that I'd met and, and listened to their stories. Um, yeah, I mean, it, there was a, our sound guy's mother uh, had um, Alzheimer's and we did a scene and he had to get up and leave afterwards because he said, that's my mother. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's, it's a very hard uh, subject matter, mm -hmm. so. But I was uh, happy that we did it, and I'm very proud of it. Yeah, it's a beautiful movie. Mm. I don't know if it's okay to say this, but if you forgot some lines, you could always say, I have Alzheimer's. That's true, especially in that movie. In fact, I probably did forget lines. <laughs> <laughs> I forget lines all the time. Uh, me too. Well, I, no, I, th that was a beautiful movie to get, you know, uh, to give it its due, its due justice, um, it probably didn't even get the attention that I think it, it deserved. It's it was well written and, and very well acted, very believable. Uh, and of course, you you remain a great acting partners with uh, with Jessica. Uh, yeah, I mean, you're 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 the connection you know that you have really kind of comes through uh, in seeing you. It was a trust. I think in the movie, you know, the trust that you have I, as friends and uh, co-workers, I guess, can really did come through uh, in the role. Um, and it, 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 for anyone who's uh, ever had a family member with it, I mean, it, it is a beautiful movie to say. I highly recommend it. Um, yeah, and Jessica is um, uh, the kindest person you'll ever meet and um, funny as I'll get out. And she's, um, it, we never, uh, did, we didn't work a lot together uh, on camera. We had some scenes on Guiding Light, but uh, it was always easy working with her. It was just, you're just comfortable. There's a, there's just that, like you said, that trust that um, it's all gonna be fine. And it's, it's really one of the easiest working relationships I've ever had. Sure. Well, those early years on Guiding Light, you were competing over, I guess, Gus, uh, right. Right, the character Gus. Uh, uh, but the real interesting part of the scenes was, was the two of you, um, right? I mean, because even though you're competing over, over him, the, the combative uh, nature of your relationship uh, just, it came through like a chemistry, like as much as you were fighting, you were somewhat intrigued by one another. Yes, I mean that's it. We used to say on, on daytime. Maybe they still say it. It's it's your enemies, and then your frenemies, and then your friends, and then your lovers. But it's, and, always, it's always in that order. That's how a relationship starts. And I think your yours the the interesting part to me, I think about yours is that it evolved. Uh, in a way when you didn't know it was evolving, uh, right? Because I mean, with, with other people, it would have been easy to guess what they were doing, you know, when you were thrown into any situation where it was a, a male counterpart uh, to see, oh, eventually they'll lead me down the path of I'll be with this person. Uh, but I think in the, uh, to your credit for, for you and she, in those early days, that couldn't have been in the back of your mind. So very kind of organically, uh, I think those scenes evolved. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I think I just like you said. I think the, the the whole story was beautifully written, so that it was, it was uh, just it was all there. It was a big, gorgeous, you know, present. Sure, and I think it helped your character to to grow quite a bit. I mean, you you were somewhat one dimensional in your meanness, right? In the uh, no offense, but in the early. Uh, uh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I try to kill somebody and go shopping the next day. You know, <laughs> whatever works. Yeah. yeah, no, I think that it, it you know, um, she was, uh, for me, the least likely character to to find a romance with 
uh, a woman. She was always about, I, she had every man in um, Springfield. And, uh, you know, I figured they were just going to start rotating me around again, you know? <laughs> um, and I was like, oh, okay, this is awesome. And like I said, they really built it slowly. And of course, Gus and Gus's heart. Um, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And those are some important uh, important scenes as well, I guess, being the, the victim of, you know, of heart problems. Um, I'm always interested in those scenes that involve like Alzheimer's or heart you know, problems, they do them justice to the people who are actually suffering with those conditions. I, you know, you, you kind of have a burden, I think, placed upon you. Yes. And, you know, in that situation, you just, you do your best, you do research, of course, but um, uh, there's only, you know, uh, there are going to be people who go, yes, that's exactly what it is. And other people go, that's nothing like what it is. Soaps, I mean, it's that that's all. I mean, you're, you're always being thrown a lot of dialogue every day. I mean, do you have a great memory? I have to assume you do. I used to. Now I write everything down. It's a muscle, right? So when you use it, it, it springs back. But um, I haven't been reading dialogue like that. Well, I, I get so busy with pre production when I get on a set of mine, um, I don't know my lines and I hate to. <laughs> but um, I can learn it pretty fast. That's still there. Mm. But then, then I'm like, why do I have to say so much? Why can't they say stuff? You know, no, I'm kidding. Um, but yeah, it, yeah, it's it's a muscle. So tell us about what's what, what's coming up and where people can go to, uh, to, to follow you, to watch some of these shows. Sure. Um, well, I'm... Uh, it, currently, we're writing the prequel to Venice, the series, and then we'll shoot season seven at the end of this year, early next year, but we'll start crowdsourcing probably summer. Um, and you can find me on Twitter. I'm mostly on Twitter, Crystal Chappelle, and um, Facebook the same, and Insta, and um, the occasional TikTok when I, when I feel like I'm 25. <laughs> 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 so, many, so many apps you have to keep up with i'm like hmm. yeah, right? yeah i'm like i just know how to put the bunny ears on okay. <laughs> um, better than me <laughs> <laughs> so and uh, vimeo you can go to vimeo to watch yeah. your your shows uh i think youtube has a couple of seasons of venice seasons one and two are on youtube for free so people can go and watch it and wow. seasons three through six are on vimeo Right, and uh, seven's coming up, and the movie, I believe, can you can catch the movie on Vimeo. I, I think it's on Amazon Prime. Amazon Prime, okay. Yeah. And, uh, the name of the movie. Uh, One million happy nows. And I highly recommend it. I, I saw it a while ago when it first came out. It's a it's a really touching. Uh, it's a really just touching movie. Um, so I, I highly recommend it. Uh, you know, you are. I recommend anything you're in. Uh, you know. Well, thank I, you. I think that uh, I think you're a great actress, uh, and I think you really do justice to every part you you play. Having had this opportunity to sit and talk with you, I see you're you're a lovely woman, uh, soft spoken, uh, kind, uh, and and borderline a little bashful, uh, you know, which I wasn't expecting, and I don't know why, uh, because your characters are quite the opposite. Uh, <laughs> you know, know, they're they're very dominant and life of the party. Uh, I think, and as a credit to you, how you easily make people believe you're very different than you are. Like I said, I'm a, I'm a, I, I, I'm a, I like to exercise. I like to meditate. I, I, you know, you find hope in every day and something to be grateful for. And I think I'm a little more, um, uh, that's more me. I like to watch people. I, I find humanity to be a beautiful thing really um in spite of uh some things and uh yeah that's who i am so it's fun to be able to put on you know some bitch suit and just go out there and kick some ass nobody <laughs> nobody does it like you <laughs> i love to meditate I, I've, I've done uh, i've done tm for 26 years are you kidding that's yeah. awesome yeah. i started in 1994 i believe Whoa. So it's been a while. TM? Yes, TM. Ah. Uh, uh, yeah. Wow. 
Yeah. Amazing. It's a wonderful thing. I highly recommend it. I haven't missed a day in 26 years. I did it this morning. That's yeah. awesome. I have missed some days, but I that's yeah. an awesome track record. Yes. And it makes a huge difference. It's I think a, I think that sort of helps me go out and do all that that yeah. acting stuff because you can just kind of separate a little bit. Like a recharge and a clearing out. It's just a, it covers everything. Yeah. Yeah. Well, sure. we're going to have to let Crystal go. And she was nice enough with all she's got going on to squeeze us in. Oh, uh, I appreciate this. And I, yes, I'm going to go paint my house now. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not going to, we're not going to stand in your way. We really want to thank you for being on the show. Uh, we'd like you to come back, you know, especially as you're, you know, when, let's say when Venice is about to be released, please come back. Give us some spoilers. Oh, I'd, love I'd love to. Absolutely. I'm excited to get back into production, like, like in person again. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Crystal. So nice to meet you. So nice to meet you. You guys and take care. Have a beautiful day or evening. You too. You too. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye.